Buddy, uh, how are you, man? It's great to see you. I'm good, man. I haven't seen you for so long, so it's very nice to see your beautiful little face. How, how, how am I looking? Have I changed since you saw me last? You look very handsome, man. Have you been have you been using face creams? Have you been working out? Because I'm just <laughs> I'm just feeling the same radiating beauty that I get from mother's son every single day. <laughs> oh, good. At first, I thought you were going to say from my mother, which I wouldn't know how to take that. <laughs> Um, but no, dude, it's, it's crazy. I, I really wanted to have you on for the first time, uh, I did this and tried this because you were the first person who came and did this podcast when I switched to doing this on zoom and when the yeah, pandemic yeah. happened and when all this craziness started, like before that, I wouldn't even do remote interviews. Like people would ask me and I would turn it down. Cause I was like, no, in person only, <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, we had to switch on a dime. And I remember, I don't know what you remember about that, but for me, what I remember is me asking you like less than a day before and you just being down for it, uh, yeah. which is kind of what happened for this too. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, I was just telling someone earlier, um, I remember you came to my show in San Diego and you came to my hotel room. For That's that right. first podcast, yeah. Yeah, that was the first time we ever met, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How are you, buddy? Are you, is this the same place? Are you in the same place where I talked to you 14, 15 months ago? Yeah, man, I've been, I've been in my childhood bedroom um, for more than a year now, and I can't wait <laughs> to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I remember when all this went down, like the last time we were talking, you were saying that, you know, you kind of had to make this snap decision back at the start of the pandemic when all these lockdowns were happening. And it was, you were, I think, in Belgium at the time. And then it was like, well, if you want to come back to the States, you got to come right now or you might not be able to. Yeah, exactly. So, um, it's, it's, it's actually quite crazy. So I was on a tour in Australia and I was coming back for a rampage in Belgium, like the really big show. And I was coming back for, um, I think a week and a half. And then I was going to, um, go to LA to move there. And in that week and a half Corona happened and they were like, my like management at the time said like, okay, so like you can come over now or it might take like a month or something. And I was like, oh, I can wait a month. And then this whole situation ended up <laughs> taking so right. long. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. Was that tough? How, how was it mentally there at the start? Um, at first, it was kind of great just because uh, I hadn't seen my family in so long. And I always miss my home studio. Like, like I really... Like, I don't know what it is with the acoustics of the room, but like, I literally prefer this room over like, uh, like a really, really expensive studio. Yeah. So, so like by, by home studio, we mean childhood bedroom, right? For <laughs> yeah, clarity. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, at first it was great. Um, like a couple of the tracks that I released recently, like, like all, like all those ideas were probably made in like the first month and a half or something of me being here with with covid because i was like oh man i can chill out i don't have to tour i can i can just make music it all sounds great whatever and then like then after that period like the magic kind of disappeared and i was like oh man i've never been here for so long since yeah. i was like 16 or something because i've always been traveling and then i kind of freaked out for a bit and I think I freaked out for probably like three or four months. I got like a little depressed and stuff. But then um, I started hanging out with friends and 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 doing just all kinds of stuff. And now I don't really mind it. Like I think if if I think if I would just get money for free, like I <laughs> like I'd be down with just <laughs> with just well, doing this. I mean, if I got money for free. There were a lot of things I would probably do and not do. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess that's like the, the thing though, right? Is like, what would you do 
because this this time did sort of force us to stay in one place and did sort of force us to be like, well, you know, you can't keep pursuing whatever you were pursuing in the same way. I, I mean, did you, this is a super broad question, but did you figure out anything? Did you learn anything about yourself, why you're doing it? I mean, obviously, you know, you've been putting out a bunch of tunes lately and it seems like you've been really re-energized with all of that. Did, did anything change for you, like creatively, the way you think about what you do and your art and all that? I think I think one of the big things that happened was um, like pretty much once I got into college, my like first year of college, and the Eptic thing kind of started uh, start started gaining traction. Um, I always knew like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do as um, as a job, and I never really questioned it. And then COVID happened, and I've I've always had this like stream of income coming in like constantly. And then all of a sudden I go from like playing shows like every weekend to like just getting money from like streams and merch. Yeah. And then I, I, I kind of came in touch with this feeling of like, Oh fuck. What if at one point my career just stops and I got to do something else. So I really started thinking, um, and I'm kind of glad that happened because I did, start to just explore new avenues. I was like, okay, like if I can't do music anymore, you know, uh, I got like a, like graphics and animation background. Like maybe I can do something with that. Um, man, I started like a lot of people, um, in quarantine, I started investing in crypto at a really good time and I made like a ridiculous amount of money and then I <laughs> lost it all. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. So, um, I like, laughed too early. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like, it's actually quite nice because I learned a lot about investing, which I'm really stoked about. Uh, and I think definitely now with, with playing shows and stuff, I'm, I'm going to start investing my money instead of just like hoarding it all. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's something they and, uh, don't teach us, right? Especially at a young age. I think it's possible for artists, if, especially if you sort of catch a spark at a young age, the money starts coming in, but nobody tells you what to do with it. No, no. And it's, and it's so important because like I've had, um, I've always had really bad accountants and I've always like, I, I, I only figured out during Corona that I lost so much money because of that. That's like another thing. I learned during Corona, I was like, okay, you know what? Like I got to set up all these businesses like properly. Um, so I can make as much money so I can start doing bigger shows and doing bigger tours and like whatever, because it's all important. And I think, like you said, like a lot of people get into this being really young and they don't really know anything about it, myself included. Um, how old were you when you first started playing like out of town shows? Oh man, like I was like 16 or something or wow. like 17. Yeah. And like, like I wasn't getting like crazy money for it or like anything, but like, I remember, <laughs> uh, you know what? Enough time has passed. So they can't really do anything about it, but, yeah, um, let's go. Like, um, like, I think, I think I started playing shows when I was like, fi like 15 or, or, or 16. And, um, um, it wasn't for a lot of money, but like I played a lot of them. Like every weekend I, I would play like four or five shows. Like this was when in Belgium, Dubstep was just like booming. And, and, and I was like, I was playing so many shows. And at one moment, like I just had this like fairly big sum in like my bank account. And I remember telling my manager at the time, I was just like, man, like earning money is so easy, you know? And <laughs> it's so good. That's such yeah. a great 16 year old statement. Yeah. Just be I, like, I, I don't like, know what you adults are worried about. Yeah. I was like, like, I don't get what you guys are talking about. Like, <laughs> like this is so easy. <laughs> and, um, um, my manager at the time was like, yeah, but then you got to pay taxes on it. And I was like, I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, come again? He was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah. Like you got to pay taxes on it. Like they take like, like 40% or something like that. And I was just like, oh, and he's like, 
you have been doing your taxes right it was like man <laughs> like I, I had no idea uh i'm, I'm 16 um oh, man. and i just yeah i just ended up doing nothing about it i just kept it <laughs> have you ever talked to uh you ever talked to woolly about all this stuff oh man i think I think if I would tell Wooly about my early days, he would have a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know, yeah. man. It was so funny. The the first time, actually kind of like you, the first time I really talked to him was on this podcast. And I didn't know he had such a big financial background. And then hearing him talk about it, it blew my mind that he still has like active clients. Like he's managing people's money right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. You should manage mine, man. Like you would be so much better at it. I think me. he'd be down, honestly. I but it's <laughs> it's wild to me. Like that's it's interesting how different people's brains work. Like I, I could tell talking to him, like that's fun for him. He like really yeah. enjoys managing yeah. money and thinking what about What a weirdo, money. man. <laughs> Shout out to Willie, man. I love nah, that guy. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> but it's interesting. I don't know. Did like this is again very broad question. But did you meet anybody along the way who kind of in the same way we're talking about, like thought about the business differently than you or changed the way your brain worked about the way you saw your own career or your own creativity? Does anything, any specific person pop into mind? Um, not really, man. It's like, like people always gave me terrible money advice. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't think a single person has given me. So you've just learned to trust advice. nobody. Yeah. I don't trust anyone because like, like it's so crazy in this industry, but like literally so many people stole money from me and like took advantage from me. Um, because, because I was so young, like at the time. Um, and, um, it was just kind of learned, like it's, it's, it's always good to like utilize other people and like, I like have a business manager now and stuff like that because it makes life easier. But I, I try to stay like really on top of everything and I overlook everything. And I try to do as much myself as possible because um, it's just like, I think, I think if you're not really into money and stuff, it's really, really easy to, to like kind of whiffle it off to the side and not pay attention to it. And then just like crazy stuff happens without you knowing. And then like years later, you're like, oh my God, like how did that happen? Yeah. And yeah. Well, and I think that's for, you know, for all anybody watching right now, anybody who's listening to this when we put it out later, like I think that's applicable at any level. And it's not even necessarily about musicians, right? It's sort of whatever goal you're working on, whatever you're trying to accomplish, even if you're not that far along yet, it's you got to start thinking about that stuff early even if it's just small changes, even if you're talking about a difference in, you know, $10 to a hundred dollars, like all that stuff adds up. And like you said, year after year, right? Like you can look back and be like, Oh man, I really yeah. <laughs> messed this up for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think one of the biggest mistakes I've made and it was actually kind of ridiculous. And like, and like this, and like, this is a thing, like this was a mistake I made. Um, it's, when you start playing bigger shows and stuff, like a lot of money comes in and it gives you the illusion that you just have so much money, but like you kind of forget that you have to pay all these expenses. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like when you do a show and it's like a big headline show, you like usually pay for like all the production. So it's like the LED screens, um, like all the CO2, like all this crazy stuff. And it's like literally like thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, but when you see the show offers and stuff and you just see that money coming in, you're like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm so rich. And like, I, <laughs> like, I just started going like, like usually I'm, I'm pretty good with my money as well. But like, I just had one year where I was just like, I was just eating like sushi like three times a week right? and like just nice like always sushi. eating out. And I, 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 I spent so much money on food, man, like a ridiculous amount. <laughs> like I, um, like when I sell my, my accountant in Belgium, she was like, man, like, did you buy like a nice car or something? I was like, no, man, like I've just been eating so much sushi. I've shit. eaten a car's weight in sushi. Yeah. I was, I was so embarrassed, man. It's so stupid, but yeah, this year is going to be different. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. And I mean, it's interesting. Like, what do you, 
as long as we're on the topic of money, like what, what is valuable for you? What are you cool with spending money on? What actually brings value into your life versus, you know, sushi four times a week? <laughs> um, well, like usually like, for instance, when I'm here in Belgium, like I, I, I hardly spend like any money. Like I just go to like the grocery store and make food. Um, and I've never really been someone to like, like I know people that just spend like all their money on like, you know, to like go and buy a crazy car and like, and like buy all these crazy clothes and stuff. And like, I've never really done that. I think the only stuff I really spend money on, especially when I'm on tour is, it's mostly just food and kind of travel as well. Um, just because I like, I don't like to like feel bad. Like, <laughs> that's you know, like, like, <laughs> like if, like if you travel like all the time, sometimes, you know, and you're in like all these shitty airports and stuff and you're like eating airport food, like throughout the week, that's why I ate so much like sushi and like went to like nice restaurants and stuff because that's like something I could like control. Yeah. And like, it would just make me feel like, oh my God, I'm having like good food in my system um, instead of like Burger King. <laughs> I, I like the way you put it but, though. It's something you can control, right? I think that's, that's yeah. part of like touring in the road life. I don't think everybody knows about is that you do feel sort of that most things are out of your control, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I, had, um, I remember one time um, when I was traveling in New Zealand, um, I, like I played two shows in a row and like, I didn't sleep at all and I felt really bad. And, um, I was about to play this, this really big festival in New Zealand. And like, I just felt awful. And I had this like five or six hour flight to get to Auckland. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to upgrade. Um, and the upgrade ended up being like a ridiculous amount of money. And I ended up doing it uh, because I was like, you know what? If I just get like a little bit of sleep on this flight, my whole experience is, is, is just going to be so much better. Yeah. And it was, and I was really happy I did it. But like, like that's like the kind of stuff I like usually like spend money on is just kind of like, like feeling like comfortable. Yeah. Well, that's the just road taking care of yourself. Stuff. Right. Cause you know how beaten down you're going to get by all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, if you like, I've done the opposite thing as well. It's like when I first start, started touring, like I took all the cheapest flights yeah, same. and like, ev and like every flight would be at like five in the morning and stuff like that. I still do that a little, to be honest. Yeah, I kind of like, like the, the 5 a.m. flights, though. This is just a side note. I, I like the 5 a.m. flights because those are the ones, you know, they're always going to be on time. That's going to ensure that exactly. I spend the, le the least amount of time in the airport. Exactly. Exactly. I do like I do it sometimes as well. But it's just like, you know, like if you're like on tour or something and, and, and you know, you're doing like four or five shows like in the road. Like I remember a couple of years back, I like did a tour where like like literally every every, um, every flight we took was like the earliest flight and it was just, it was so brutal. And yeah. like, we saved a lot of money, but like, it was just like, so, so brutal. Yeah. Um, so I'm yeah, I, do I don't again. miss those days, man. I mean, I remember like way, way, way back in the day when I was first starting to tour, like before I should have been touring, like I, you know, I, yeah. I convinced <laughs> people to book me places, but they should not, you know, <laughs> they should not have done that. But I remember, uh, you know, I would take fucking, I was in Chicago. I would take Greyhound buses to other cities. I remember, oh my God, yeah. I remember once I took, once I took a bus from New York city to Toronto, which is like an eight hour bus ride. And you have to like get off the bus at the border. And I had to convince the guy that I was supposed <laughs> to be there. And like, no, I really am playing a show. I know I'm on a Greyhound bus and this looks insane, <laughs> but I actually have paperwork and the whole thing, man. It's that part of it. I don't miss at all. But there's always levels. Like, yeah. actually, I just reminded myself the first time I ever toured Australia. And this kind of goes back to what you were saying about, you know, 
just taking all the cheapest stuff and feel a little out of control. So I was flying from, uh, my first show of the tour was in Perth, but I was flying from LA to Sydney and then Sydney to Perth. And it was like back to back flights, like no break in between. So it's like a 15 hour yeah. flight immediately followed by another six hour flight. And, uh, so I was on there and I did, I did pay a little money to upgrade and I weirdly ended up sitting next to Paul Oakenfold on this 15 hour <laughs> flight. <laughs> it's crazy. And, oh, that's funny. Oh man. And we didn't really talk at all until the end of the flight, at which point I was like, Hey man, not to bother you, but you know, uh, you're Paul Oakenfold, right? And he was like, not stoked at all that I was talking to him. And yeah. I was just like, Hey man, I big fan. Uh, known your work for a long time. This is actually my first tour in Australia. I assume you're here touring as well. And then he got uh, super like fatherly about it. Like he a uh, switch flipped and he was like asking me about my routing and what venue I was playing. And then he <laughs> just started like kind of critiquing me, kind of giving me a hard time. He was like, this is a stupid flight routing. You should have never agreed to this. <laughs> he was like... <laughs> <laughs> just and, roasting you. Oh, just roasting me. Yeah. In like a <laughs> sweet way. But uh, yeah, he was just like, you need to talk to your agent. This is not how it should be done. And the whole time I was just like, look, man, I'm just happy to be here. Like, I don't know anything else. I, I can't, uh, I can't tour like you tour. Not yet. But it did make me realize that there's always levels to it. Cause I thought I was fancy for like upgrading my flight to Australia. And then he was just yeah. like, no, you did this all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, i don't know man you have any you have any brushes with uh with those the the older heads the legends in our scene where you sort of realize that we're part of like a longer legacy of djs and producers because i think we you know we always focus on ourselves and on our scene in the moment and what's happening right now but i that was one of those moments for me where i was like oh this has been going on a lot longer than me and I actually don't know anything. Yeah. I mean, um, back in the day, I like got a lot of when, when schism was still my uh, manager, like, like he actually gave me like a lot of good advice because like he used to do, uh, what was it called again? Like control Z before he did schism. Okay. Um, yeah. So like he was, he was touring for like a really, really long time before he was doing schism as well. So like, he just had a load of, uh, uh, experience, but like, I think, I think apart from that, not, not really. Um, yeah, no, but yeah, I really well, think that, of anything. That's fair, man. I mean, I think that's, that's good that you've been able to, to figure all this shit out. I only talk <laughs> to young people, man. I'm cool. <laughs> <hell. laughs> I mean, do you feel older now? Like, obviously uh, you've been in the game for a long time now. Do you, does your perspective on yourself, like, do you feel like an old man in the game, even though you're not? Man, it's really crazy. Like I've been having like a midlife crisis at like 28 years old. <laughs> when like, you should I think, be having a quarter life crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I think, um, it's really weird because like people think like people think I'm either a lot younger than I am or they think I'm really old. Like a lot of people <laughs> think I'm like 40 or something Yeah, because they like started listening, uh, to me when they were the same age as me or like a little younger. So like they all automatically think like, Oh, this guy's like 38 or something. Like I constantly get like, 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 like comments like, oh man, it's like, it's like crazy how an old man like you is like, like still relevant. I'm like, man, I'm fucking 28, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's funny though, cause it's hard not to feel old because you know, the people coming to our shows are 18 years old. They're 21 years old, you know, and that yeah, exactly. stays kind of constant while we get older. Something I've definitely noticed is when I started out, making music i was so involved into the fan like in the fan scene of everything like i was like i was one of the fans and then like i had such a clear vision of like what music i wanted to make because i was just kind of like i wanted to make the same kind of music as these people that i look up to and then who were those people i like at the time it was like, like Dr. P and like fun case yeah. and, uh, whatever, like there's like circus boys. And 
um, and as I got older, like, like the people kind of changed, like, you know, like, like I started loving Skrillex and stuff. I still do. Um, but like, I was at this really clear vision because like, I was such a fan of the music and like, I'm, I'm, I'm still a fan of the music, but, um, like, I don't really know what it is, but like, I feel so much less in, like involved in that fan scene because I've been in this like artist position, um, yeah. position for so long. So it's hard to put yourself back in that mode. Right. I, I feel like that's like, that's the, the paradox that we all have to sort of constantly figure out is that we all got into this because we were a fan and that's yeah, like, exactly. It, it's that kind of energy and that love for it. Like that's ideally if we're doing our jobs, right? Like that's what we're putting back out there. Right. But then you get on the other side of it and, uh, man, is it different <laughs> and, and hard yeah, to stay connected. It's so weird, man. And like, I always had this, uh, kind of philosophy that I still think that works is like, I've always just made the kind of music that I thought was cool. Um, and I was like, if, if, if people really are a fan, they'll probably follow that thought process and they will probably think it's cool as well. And like, so far it has worked. Um, <laughs> but then like, <laughs> like this last year, you know, I've had so much time with my thoughts and I'm, I kind of started thinking like, like, what do I think is cool? You mm -hmm. know, like, what do I really want to make? Yeah. And I became like really existential about it. And like, I couldn't make music for a while because I was just like, man, like, I don't even know what I want to make, you know, like, yeah. do I want to make dubstep? Like, do I just want to start producing pop records? I, was like, <laughs> I don't know. All and of which think, you could do, by the way. I think that's another, you know, I, I think you have an ability that not everybody has, which is that, you know, even when you post like little clips of like the funny like rap songs you make or the rock songs or any of that, it's like you could go and make pop songs. Like you don't, the, I, I don't think you, this it, it defines you, like what you're known for. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think... Um, I think I could do it. It's just like, like so many ideas have been like off and on the table. Um, like I, I've, I think I've had the plan to like make a side project like 10 times. I'm like, Oh man, like I'm like, I'm just going to start doing this like different thing and it's going to be completely different and I'm going to kill the branding and like blah, 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 blah. And then every time I kind of come back to it, I was like, Oh, you know, I should just do it under Aptic and like see what happens. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my plan for now. So like if all of a sudden I'm just not making dubstep anymore, you know why? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. I mean, it's funny though, because I don't even know, do you consider yourself a dubstep artist? Like so much of what you make, I think is really hard to categorize. Yeah. I mean, it's like, like it's definitely gotten a lot more like trappier and stuff uh, the past couple of years, but it's, it's kind of in this weird lane because it's kind of too heavy for all the trap stuff, but it's kind of like too hybrid to like really be called dubstep, I guess. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I would love to just be... I think be, that's good though. Yeah, no, like, uh, I like that. Like, I would just like to get to the point where I can just say like, oh, like I'm like an electronic music artist, you know, and yep. like not really put it, um, put a genre on it. Um, yeah, man. Well, and I think if, if what you're doing is sticking to that same ethos you had when you started of just making what you think is cool, like that's, that's what people are going to follow you for. You know, I think that's such a better way to define yourself as an artist, whether you have a huge following or a tiny following, at least that's the people who like what you do. You can always trust that whatever you do next, they're going to be down with it because it's, you know, they're, they're liking you for, for your brain, for your process more so than you know whatever your last tune was yeah 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 yeah. exactly uh i think it's best to go that route as well because like i feel once you try and like keep up with like what other people are doing or chase a certain sound like it never really comes across spontaneous yeah um yeah yeah i, I guess think that's, just just i think that's right i mean it's yeah. Well, what you were saying earlier about this last year and you sort of trying to figure out, you know, why do I do what I do? What do I actually like? 
I mean, what did you figure out? Have have some of these new releases that you've been putting out, the stuff with uh, with Marshmallow or the stuff on Monster Cat? Well, this stuff with Marshmallow, I'm sure that was done a long time ago. But does that, like the stuff people have been hearing, does it kind of represent what you've figured out? Or have people not heard a lot of, you know, what we're talking about right now? Um, I think I think they've not really heard a lot of what we're talking about because like when... When 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 quarantine first happened, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going back to the roots, and I'm like, gonna make that like old dubstep again. And that's when I made like the stop pretending song and like shadow people and like even the drum and bass one, like payback. Like, it's all kind of like that like older sound. Um, but then like like further along, um, it actually like. Um, I actually kind of changed my mind when do you know slow th- uh, a slow tie oh yeah absolutely yeah so like he um he put out his new album and i was like man like like this shit's so dope like i would love to make a song with him and i was like you know what i'm actually really confident that i could make something really cool with him like like not even something with like a drop or something but just like like me producing like the beats and shit and then I was kind of thinking, like, oh man, like, if I hit up slow, um, if I if I hit up slow tie, and he just sees this like whole yeah. track record on Spotify with just like fucking like EDM bangers, yep. he's probably gonna be like, oh man, like, I don't want to do this shit. I mean, yep. it's 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 possible that he would, but like, I think there's a big chance a lot of rappers are gonna be like, oh, like, I don't want to work with this like EDM stuff. Um, but in my mind, I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, I think I could really do this. Um, so I think the best way to like um, reach that goal is to by just doing it, to by just making different music. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent, man. Then yeah, you know, so, people people pull up the resume, they pull up what you've done, and yeah, it'll be it'll be a whole different conversation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like. Like, I don't really see why I would, like, try and put myself into this box just because, I, I like, I I have been doing dipstep music and, like, bass music for so long. Um, but, like, I know I can make a lot of other stuff and, like, I kind of feel like it's a waste to, like, not really explore that. Absolutely. Um, like, Absolutely. I think it would be really dope to, like, like imagine just like one day making like a song with like Billie Eilish or something, you know, like, like, and it sounds super crazy, but like, like, I feel like it's, it's a reachable goal. Like I didn't even think that that like, that like Marshmallow and DJ Snake would like want to work with me and just like every time just like reach out and like, they always say yes. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going (laughs) to try it. Yeah, absolutely. Is that, did you reach out to them? Is that how those collabs started? Yeah, like um, I met like I met Snake randomly in an airport, and we just ended up talking. And he was already playing a bunch of my music, and I I, I just told him I was like, we're gonna make a collab, and he was like, okay. <laughs> and then I started talking to Dylan online, and I just told him one day like I'm coming to your house, and like we're making a song, and he was like, okay. And then uh, I kind of forgot how the marshmallow thing happened. Like I think. Um, well, you know, he's a, he's a giant marshmallow. So, you know, it's a little different with him. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think my manager at the time just like reached out to him and he was just like, yo, make a song with Eptic. And then like literally the same day he just like texted me. It was just like, yo, like, <laughs> let's make a song. I was like, right. <laughs> okay, cool. Great. Oh. <laughs> well, how does, you know, I, I feel like maybe we talked about this in other podcasts, but I don't even remember. So I, we'll just talk about it again. Like when you're working and collaborating with other people, whether they're big names or small names, I, I you have such a unique sound in your production. Like, I think that's that's one of my favorite things about your work is that I hear it and immediately I know it's you. I don't have to be told. It's because I always take over the projects, man. Like I'm <laughs> I'm 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 
like I'm such a dick to work with because like I want control over like everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, but how does that how does that work? Because you got to deal with you know other people's egos and other people's ideas. Like, is it just that kind of thing where you just tend to sort of take the lead? Not really with the smaller collabs, but like the really big collabs. Usually, I'll start out by like making a song and sending it over to them, and they'll and they will be like, okay. Um, I like this one and I'll be like, okay. And then they'll send me something back and I usually completely change it and then send it back again. And that will happen like a couple of times until we both like are happy with it or like compromise a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and that's usually how it happens. Um, I think, I think probably the thing I like to do most, but like it doesn't really happen often is just to like go and sit together in the studio. Like I got this, uh, I got this one track um, with Valentino Khan that still isn't out. Uh, and I think that one is the best example. Um, we both just got into like the studio, like nothing prepared. And we sat there for like six hours, like yeah. trying stuff out and it just wasn't working. And like, we've already ordered food and we were really tired. And I was just thinking to myself, like, man, like, I, I just want to go home. Yeah. It's and, just one of those write-offs. Yeah, exactly. And he was kind of pushy at the time. Like, he was just like, oh man, but like, like, like try like a couple more, like, like little things. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. And um, I kept messing around and literally like out of nowhere, I, I just tried something random and we were both like, oh, like, holy fuck, like, this is so sick. <laughs> and, um, um, and it was kind of cool because like we were both thinking in like a certain direction, like, like, like this is what the song is, is going to sound like. And it wasn't really anything that we had envisioned, but like it was really good. So, uh, it didn't matter. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that feeling is really great, like truly working together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like you actually, you worked through it, like you hit that wall and then you crashed through it, which is the best feeling ever. Yeah. And it's like, you're like making decisions together because it's like, I feel what happens now a lot of the times, especially with these like big collabs, it's like, it's like you both kind of like, like make sections. I'm like, okay, I'll make the drop. And then they're like, okay, so like I'll make the intro. And, and like, you can tell, like you can tell who makes who, you know, or who yeah, makes yeah, what. Yeah, exactly. And like, I think it's really cool when you're making like decisions like over the overall track. And like, I think those are like the best tracks as well. Yeah, um, completely agree. And especially like what you said a second ago about that it didn't end up being whatever you both thought it was going to be. That was like really the good idea. I think that's always the best, too. I, I don't know yeah. if it's the same for you. Like when you sit down to write a song, do you already have an idea in your head? Because for me, the more I like pre plan something in my head, the worse it's going to be. The, I think the best things for me is when I don't have much of a plan. I maybe have like a little idea of something to try, but then within five, 10 minutes, it's totally changed already. Yeah. It like, I think, um, I think like, like even not on a collab, just like on tracks in general, like sometimes yeah. when, well, okay, no, like let's switch back to a collapse because I'm going to go off track, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> Like if you work with someone and you already have like a really steady idea of, okay, like this is how it's got to be. Um, I think what happens a lot is like, for instance, like sometimes you're trying to make a certain sound and it's just not working out and you just get frustrated or you try and really steer the collab like a certain direction and the other person has a different idea and it just becomes this like kind of clash like yeah like the way that when you're sitting on an airplane and there's like a small kid next to you trying <laughs> to like force his arm and like the armrest and you're both like pushing <laughs> and by the end you just want to punch the kid uh, <laughs> well go like, on like yeah and like that's something that can happen as well so like i think for like collabs it's just best to like keep an open mind and just see what happens because 
like I've been surprised a lot of times, like, like, like a lot of times I like work with someone and I'm just like, oh man, like this is not going to work out. And then like, it works out great. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, it's interesting, man. I mean, the only reason I, I asked the question in the first place is because I think you do have such a unique sound. And I, w- I was thinking about your sound. I was listening to some of your tunes earlier today. And this is, again, a super broad question, and it's okay if you don't have an answer. But uh, the question I kept coming back to is like, what do you think you do differently than other people are doing? Because your tunes, the way they come out, like, do you think it's something in the mixing? Is it something in the sound design? Do you think it's something like less concrete than that? There's something that just makes your tunes sound different than everybody else. Like, I don't really know, man. And sometimes it's like kind of annoying because like sometimes I'm like, oh, like I want to make something that sounds like this or like whatever. And like it, it, you you can't. (laughs) Yeah, I can. Like, it does always sound like me. And I mean, like, like, I do think that's a good thing. Like, I think for instance, it's like, like, like that's something I've been trying to figure out as well. Like, um, like when like Skrillex works on like a track, like he can make a simple hip hop beat. Like it can literally just be like a kick, a snare and like hi hats. Like somehow it just, it like sounds like him. And like, I don't know how the hell he does it, but like, I guess, uh, I have that as well in like my own way. And like, like that's something like I do think is like is like pretty cool, but it's like a double edged blade because like sometimes, like I said before, like I do want to make something that like sounds sometimes I just generally try just just for production purposes to like just make something to like rip off like yeah. Skrillex or like someone yeah. I like look up to. And then it always kind of turns into like my own thing. Like it like it just never turns into like the perfect yeah the perfect oh, 100%, rip-off. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean do you feel like uh, and this is gonna sound weird but do you feel like when you sit down to make a song do you feel like you know what you're doing if you know what i mean like obviously you're a great producer you're a great mixer engineer sound designer, I, I all that. i always think i suck man like it's like yeah. every time i start a new song i'm just like man like i suck <laughs> yeah and like everything like, i've done up to this point was an accident <laughs> and now i can't make music ever again yeah it's like after every song as well i'm just like i've i've lost it you know and like <laughs> it's like i'm i'm washed up and people hate me like i have this every year um like every year i think my career is over like i think i've I've thought for like five <laughs> years in a row now i'm just like my career is over like no one wants to see me like no one listens to my music and then like like i don't really know how it happens but like i think for like the like for like the last like four or five years like i've had like one of the most played songs like every year at yeah. like all like at like all the festivals and i don't know how we like how it keeps happening and like every year i'm just like man like i fucked it up like <laughs> uh, like i'm I, i've lost the ability to like make like good songs and then like everyone's playing and i'm just like oh okay like you're right like cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think that's just more of a that's just more of a mindset thing like because i feel that way all the time too. And I think that has more to do with kind of just who, who you are as a person, maybe who we are as people rather than, you know, if your music is actually good or bad, like, I mean, do you, do you see that? This is like a little armchair psychologist, I guess, but I mean, do you see that (laughs) in other parts of your life? Like, were, were you always like that even when you were starting off? Cause it's like, for me, like, there's, it, it's funny. And this is like a classic artist dichotomy, right? Is like insane overconfidence paired with like crippling, like insecurity. Oh yeah. Like, like that's, that's exactly me, man. Um, <laughs> like, like I, like I switch between thinking I'm literally the, the greatest person that has ever walked this earth to just like, you know, sitting in a hotel room in Miami crying (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah a reason why i have like so much trouble with like uh, a lot of this stuff is that i'm like um and and it's something that i got from like my dad like i'm like extremely perfectionistic so like it like it like has to be perfect but sometimes like sometimes things don't have to be perfect you know It's like, sometimes you like have to do like a little marketing thing or like whatever. And like people from my management will like hit me up and they'll be like, 
oh yeah, like we should, like we should do this tonight or something. And my brain always goes into like, no, 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 we can't do it tonight because I like, I got to do this and this and this, and it's going to take me like a week. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, like I started giving it a try, just like whipping it up in like half an hour or something and like putting it out and like it, it, it works the same and like, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. And it's like, like I find it really hard to, um, to pick and choose what you put your energy in. Yes. You know, yes. like, like for instance, it's, it's, it's great to put a lot of energy into like a cool song or like artwork or like whatever. Um, but like, it's kind of stupid to, spend like the same amount of time like working on like a Twitter post or something like <laughs> right dude I you know do that I mean? all the time like every every fucking Tuesday when when I release episodes of this podcast and I have to make posts about it I can sit there for an hour just like editing uh, two words on the post it's the dumbest uh, yeah I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about just 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 in general just like social media is so bad man and like I've been but I've been you're trying so good to, on it now. I feel like you just, I don't know, man. I mean, I'm sure it takes lots of work and energy, but every yeah, time well, I it, see your shit, like, it's so good. It's, 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 it's going great. But I think, um, like, I think like, for instance, like I'm, I'm always really hard on myself, like probably like a little harder than, uh, I should be, but it's, I have this bad habit of always comparing. So it was like at the beginning of, well, well, not exactly the beginning of lockdown, but like somewhere in like lockdown, I like, I like did this post on Instagram. Like, like this is just like an, an example. Yeah. And it got like 20,000 likes and I was just like, oh my God, I've never had 20,000 likes before. And that was like, every time I post something and like it, like it doesn't get like over 10,000 likes. I'm just like, oh man, like right. it's done, you know, <laughs> like it's over. <laughs> Goodbye it career. Up. And it's like, it's a really weird thought process, but it's just, um, yeah, it's a devil, man. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. I mean, do you feel like, how's your relation to it right now? Because like I said, I mean, you're, you're very good on social media. Like I think you do it very well. I'm sure it's plenty stressful. Does it stress you out? Is it something you've kind of figured out a balance with? Y yeah. So like, um, it does stress me out a lot and it's not really like posting stuff as much and like putting stuff online. But like, I think, um, like, like I always just get really addicted to it. Like really, really, really addicted. So like the thing that like always happens is like, I got way too addicted to like social media and I'm like, okay, you know what? Like I'm just not touching my phone anymore unless I need to post something. So I go on this like complete break. I start feeling really good, you know, like I'm just not looking at my phone for like two weeks at a time. And then, you know, I started looking at Instagram again, like <laughs> once in a while. And then all of a sudden it's like four in the morning and I'm just like, I'm just like scrolling and like, I'm not yeah. even looking at the stuff, but it's just like, oh man, these like little releases of like dopamine oh, or like man. whatever. Yeah. And then at, like at one point I realized like, oh shit, like this isn't good. You know what? I'm taking a break. And then like the whole cycle repeats itself again. Of course, and man. It's an addiction. Like like any other addiction, you know? Like yeah, that's yeah. The, the mechanism it operates in our brains. Yeah, exactly. But like, I think, I think that's the reason why like so many, like you're like starting to see that like a lot of like really, really big artists, like I'm just giving like, like an uh, example, but like, you know, like a couple of years ago, like, like Getter was like on social media, like all the time. Yeah. And then he kind of like backed away from it. And like, now we barely post something. And it's like, I mean, like he's still doing like really, really well. Yeah. Um, and like his music is doing really well. Like it doesn't really make that much of like a difference, but like, oh, I'm totally. sure he feels a lot better about it now. Yeah. I think you know? he's happier, man. I think it's just so easy. Like, especially if like stuff goes well for a while to like get really you like just kind of want to chase that feeling of like, oh man, like I'm going to get like more likes in this post and like, I'm like, I'm going to reach more people. Like, it's like, like, it's not really a sense of like power or anything, but like, it's just, I don't know. Like, well, I don't so, really I mean, know it's, what it's it is. Like, I don't even know why it's important yeah, to me, I, but like, 
it, it's competition and it's because it's the same way, like, you know, we're always so goal oriented in our careers, right? It's like, oh man, yeah. I played this, you know, festival in front of 20,000 people. Like you should just be stoked about that. But it's it's never that. It's always like, oh, well, you know, what's what's coming up next week? Like, wh what do we have on the calendar? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. it's that shit combined with the fact that obviously I think as a lot of us know at this point, like social media is designed to be addictive. So it's yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's it's two pronged because I think as as artists or DJs or whatever, you know, a lot of us have that similar thing of like, well, it's never really enough. I always have to be working on the next thing. You can't ever really get too comfortable. You can't even really sort of enjoy enjoy it while it's happening. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like I think this like thing, this like classic, like like you said, like it's 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 never enough like type thing, you know, it's like yeah. when you get a nice car, there's always going to be someone else who like has a nicer, newer car. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, at least here's what I'll say. And, and then we can put the social media thing away. It's like, at least to me, it looks like you're having fun with what you're doing now. Like, I like how, uh, you know, whether it's social media posts, whether it's some tie, you know, 20 second video you shoot on your phone, whether it's, you know, music, like full on music videos and these promos where you're like producing short films at this point. Like, I really yeah. like I, I can see how much fun you're having with these ideas and how far you're taking them and how weird it's getting. Like, I love all of that. <laughs> that makes me super stoked. Thanks, man. It's um, like actually how that started happening was um, my my ex-girlfriend was a really big fan. And I, I don't know if, if you know her, but like um, a really big fan of Trisha Paytas. I do know who that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> and she was watching it all the time. And I remember watching it with her and I was like, <laughs> like, I was like, how, like, how can you watch this person? Yeah. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> like what like, is this? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, I don't like, I don't want to get dragged for this. Uh, but like, I was just like, like, she's so unintelligent and, and like, it's, it's just like, she's just spewing out like random thoughts. Like there's, there's no. Yeah. There's, oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, everybody, exactly. I think everybody knows what you mean. <laughs> yeah. And um, like, I learned so much from her response. Like she told me, she was like, you know what? Like, I don't really know why I watch it, but I've been watching it for so long. And she tells me so many like details and stuff of her personal life. Yeah. That, like, it feels like I know her. And then like, I started looking at like, at like um, pretty much like every YouTuber or like whatever that's like really famous. And they're basically all just like, like sharing this like really personal information and like and 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 like and like showing their like house setup and like whatever yeah. and they're just all giving you that like like illusion of like oh like uh like even though you don't know me like you know me like yeah. like we're friends like you're not really friends but like it's <laughs> it seems like you're friends because yeah you have such a, a look into their lives and I mean, like, that's not really what I'm doing. Like, like I'm not trying to like manipulate people <laughs> to like buy <laughs> no, my no, product. No. But I know but, exactly what you mean, man. There's like a, there, it's performative in a way, but it is kind of like this new type of relationship that I think before we had things like YouTubers and content creators and all that, that kind of didn't exist. Like it's, it, it's, it's this weird sort of like, super personal but also performative relationship and it's i i'm that way with people there's people i watch where i'm like this is dumb why am i watching this and then i watch <laughs> yeah. it for like 30 hours exactly but like like i just kind of realized because uh, like a couple of years ago like 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 everything on social media was like pretending you're cool you yeah. know, it was like, I know at one point, like everyone was trying to be like DJ snake. Like they were like posting like in front of like a cool car, like a private jet and like post a quote, like, this is just the way it is. Or like, so, like something that like, doesn't mean anything, but like, it just looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> and like, like I just kind of learned like these last like two years or something. And like, man, like, I'm just like really, really going to like, 
in an unapologetic way, just like be myself yep. and just like spew like every thought I have online. I just talk to people. Like I talk with so many people in my DMs and I got this Facebook group and like stuff now as well. And I just talk to like, like everyone, like yeah. people just hit me up on the DMs and most of the time I just answer and like, like it all became like really personal and stuff. And, and it's like, like, it's actually quite fun, you know, to like actually have like a relationship with some of your fans. 100%, man, to have a little community again, like, do you do discord at all? No, like so many people have been telling me to like get, get into it, but I've just, Hey, I mean, I'm if you got honest, your I've, thing I've just going, been lazy, man. man. Yeah. Well, and if you got your thing going, that's, that's another thing I've gotten better at is like, I had people, you always have people being like, oh, you got to get on this like now before something, something. And I've gotten way better at sort of assessing that for myself. Like I I have a Discord and I love the Discord. Shout out to the Discord. And it's this great little community. (laughs) But if you got the Facebook group, like I don't do the Facebook group or, you know, there's like everybody's got their own system. And I've kind of got really tired of feeling like I have to do every outlet and every single thing that other people are doing yeah it's and it's like it's like every year like something new pops up man so like like you just can't keep up with like everything like i think you just got to pick a couple and yeah build your community there and like yeah i had people i had people shouting at me over the last year to get on clubhouse just shouting yeah. at me because they were like, you do a podcast. It's all talking. You have to do it. Yeah. It's dumb not to do it. And I was just like, I just don't want to, man. Like it's, it's cool, but I wouldn't like, I wouldn't have fun and you'd be able to tell I wasn't having yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. I made, um, I made a TikTok recently. And, oh, um, now we're talking. Yeah. Um, I, like I had the same thing, like, like everyone you like, who like watches my stories and stuff. Like I, I, like I get so many messages like every day, like, like get on TikTok, get on TikTok. And, um, I made like one video and I got like instantly verified because of my like Instagram and stuff. Yeah. And now literally like all the comments on my videos are like, like for some reason, like angry French people, like telling me <laughs> like, like why you verified, like who the hell is this guy? <laughs> oh, they're just mad. Cause you got verified. That's great. Yeah. It's so, but it, like genuinely so angry. And they're all French. Yeah. I think, I think because I'm in Belgium and like, it probably trended here or something. Yeah. Or maybe it's um, like showing it to them because of some regional like GPS thing. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> That's so good, man. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the TikTok thing, this is the other thing I've been getting better at is just posting shit, not feeling like you have to make something new every single time, right? Like I think some of the videos you do for Instagram, just throw that on TikTok. And like if one of them catches, that's great. Yeah, man. You know what? Like a couple of people have told me this before and I've been really stubborn about it. But now that you told me, I'll, I'll probably just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me bully you, man. That's right now. I'm doing exactly what I was You're just such complaining a bully, about man. people. I know. I fucking that's know. That's what it. people say around the scene. <laughs> that's yeah. You ask anybody, that's going to be the first thing <laughs> they say about me. <laughs> I, w- I don't think I've ever been called a bully in my whole life, man. You're so nice, man. You're like, <laughs> you're such a sweet person. Uh, well, I appreciate that. That's like, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I like that. I, I like hearing that, but I don't, I don't always feel like that. Do you ever feel like people have a certain perception of you, but then like you feel differently? You know what I mean? Man, I like, I like always feel like, I don't really know why. But I just always feel like I'm such a dick to people. <laughs> and that people always tell me, man, like, like you're the yeah, nicest. Yeah, you are the nicest, and, dude. <laughs> yeah. But, I think um, uh, this is actually the thing, though. I, I think the people who get that, whether it's you or me or a million other pe- nice people in the world, like we're all kind of secretly dicks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like I think there's oh, very few people who are purely just nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think everyone has like strong opinions and evil thoughts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like but the way just, you put that. Yeah. I think, I think it's just the way you like deal with situations and like how you kind of compose yourself. Yeah. Because the thing is, it's got, like, it's kind of how people say, um, 
what's that way of saying again? Like, it's not, it's not like, it's not what you think. It's like how you act or like something like oh, that. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, actions speak louder than words. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Something that. like that. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> you know, that scenario that people always talk about where like someone's standing close to like the train tracks and you like have that thought, <laughs> like, you know, like I could, yeah. like I could kill this person <laughs> so easy, but you don't do it. Yep. Like, I yep. think, I think that same scenario happens on a, on a much smaller scale, like all the time. Like, yes, yes, absolutely. Have you ever heard of the, of the, of the shopping cart theory? No, tell me. So there's this, there's this theory about whether you're a good person or not. And it's like, I don't know if that's the exact name, but it's this theory that if you bring your shopping cart back after shopping to like the little area where all the other shopping carts are, yeah, there's this like theory that that's a way of like knowing if you're a good person because there's, there's no real consequences to like not bringing back the shopping yeah. cart. Like you could just leave it somewhere in the parking lot at like, like no police officer is going to come up to you and be like, Hey, like bring back your shopping cart. Like it yep. doesn't really have any consequences, but it's just as like little thought in your head of like, Oh, you know what? I'm just going to like bring it back. So like the person who works at the store, like doesn't have to like fish it out of. 100%. And yeah. I, I always walk through the parking lot and see the like cart in the middle of the lot. And I always I'm like, well, who is that asshole? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Man, uh, yeah, I, think, I always I, wondered like, that. I think that just proves that we're both little angels. Hey, hey, I'll take it. You know, it's funny while you were saying that about uh, like standing on the subway and, and thinking about pushing someone. I bet there's like one person. <laughs> I bet there's one person watching right now who has never had that thought. And it's just it's like, like, what are, are these psychopaths, psychopaths talking about? <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably actually most people. <laughs> Um, well, look, man, I, I, I could talk to you all the time, but it, it's, it's late where you are. Uh, I want to start wrapping this up. I want to try, uh, just, just a couple quick things and then maybe we'll, I, I think people are submitting questions and I'm going to take a look at those as well. But I wanted to ask you, uh, just kind of like this first thing that pops in your head kind of questions. Um, yeah. And they're very, very broad. And I just want to see, I've never really tried this before. I just want to see if it sparks anything. And if it doesn't, that's fine. Um, but I'm thinking about uh, touring a lot lately because it's something none of us have been doing and something I'm sure we all miss. Do you have, th this is not the, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you on tour question. Okay, what, this, what this is, is do you have a memory from tour that you just think about a lot that just pops into your head a lot and like a small memory, maybe like not even something significant, but just something that like plays in your head a lot. <laughs> oh man. Like I wouldn't say like, like really, really specific memories, but like I had like a lot of the tours I did with other people, um, like with like must die and like gentlemen's club and, and schism and stuff. Um, there's just like a lot of funny moments and a lot of times when I'm just laying in bed, like they do just like randomly pop yeah. <laughs> into my head. And like, I get like really nostalgic about it. And I just think like, Oh man, like, like, like every time I'm just like, man, like I, like I, I just miss all those guys like so yeah. much. Yeah. And, um, this year for sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and, it's crazy, man. Like not to cut you off, but you know, I remember at the beginning of all this, when you and I were in DC going to that comedy show and we were both kind of talking to each other about, you know, what we were planning for the next year, like before we knew the pandemic was going to be the pandemic and you were, you know, you were planning a whole life here and it's, yeah, exactly. it's gotta be crazy to like have all that in motion and to feel like relation, not even career, but like relationships are being cemented and you're like building a friends and family here to have that all just put on hold. That's got to be a wild feeling. Man, it was like, it was such a weird situation because like, like you said, like, like I had a very concrete plan on like what to do, you know, like I was literally about to like move to LA, like uh, I had a girlfriend in like DC at the time and like, and like all this stuff. And 
like with the pandemic, like literally just like, like all of that like ended. Yeah. And I had this like big, like existential crisis. Like, and at the same time I was like thinking like, oh man, am I still going to be able to like do music? So like, that's why I had like, like three or four months where like I was really like deep inside my head and yeah. like trying to like figure stuff out. But like, you know, I think like with everything in life, like it just kind of like, like everything panned out. Yeah. You know, oh, absolutely. But it was definitely a weird experience because like everything was kind of happening at the same time. It was just like, oh, you know, like, like this might be the end of your career. And like, you know, like you've got this person that you've been dating for like a long time and like that ended as well. And like, you're probably not going to go and live there anymore. So like now get to like live in Belgium, like where I yeah. haven't been for like such a long time. And it's just like, all of a sudden you have like all these like questions and you know, you like try to come up with like solutions and they don't come to you instantly. So yeah. like, you just kind of have to like ponder on it. Yeah. Oh, oh, dude. It I mean, yeah, no. And you just, and you can't leave your house. So it's all you can do is like stew in it. Oh man. Like I completely forgot that like the first couple of months, like, yeah, like I couldn't leave my house the first couple of months. Like, like I just went outside on like, on like walks like down the street, but like, <laughs> right. I, like I couldn't, like I couldn't even go too far. It was a man like, like, like this pandemic has been nuts. Like Ooh. if you think about it, it's so nuts. Oh like, man. I mean, I like, you know, fingers crossed, like we're never going to live through something like this again, man. Yeah. Oh man. It's going to yeah. happen again for sure. Like, like I, I do not <laughs> trust people at all. <laughs> and we're back to not trusting anyone. Yeah. I mean, it's for sure. It's for sure going to happen again. It's happened historically before too. Right. But I guess, I guess I'm just hoping that like, I'll be dead by that time. You know, like I hope it's far enough down the road that I just won't be around. Cause I don't want to do but, this again, man. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like the world is just going to be like, Oh man, like we're going to save you from a next pandemic, but here's a fucking nuclear war, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think, it, I think I'm getting a picture of how your brain works, man. This is that, <laughs> that you, this is the same thing why you can't be satisfied with the, you know, whatever the last thing is. You're yeah, always looking for like yeah. the next disaster. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That's amazing. All right. Um, well, speaking of all that, I mean, what's, B before we go into some questions here, like you're coming back to the States soon, right? You're coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I wasn't like, I'm not able to like co um, come back on like a direct flight. Um, I need to go to Mexico first for like mm. two weeks. So I'm staying there at a nice little resort. Oh, planning great. a nice little vacation. Yeah, super stoked about it. Um, but I'll be back in LA uh, July 1st and nice. I'm going to be doing a bunch of shows and shit so are you great. moving all right is that the plan to like reestablish yourself uh no so like during corona i i came to the decision that actually belgium's pretty great so i'm, I'm yeah. just gonna buy a place here i mean i'm I'm still gonna be in the u.s all the time yeah and if for some reason my my you know if for some reason reason I, I do get that billy eilish collab and i become like <laughs> really rich and stuff you gotta get back like, there I, yeah yeah then i would just also get a place in the us and then i can just fly in between yeah a hundred percent man well fuck man when you're back I, I hope we run into each other in not too long man i, I miss you i was yeah, i was I bummed you the you know one of the one of the the many pandemic tragedies for me was i was like oh mikey's gonna be in dc all the time like i could actually <laughs> like we I, I could make a new friend like i don't really make new friends that often at this point in my life <laughs> and uh yeah then then that didn't happen <laughs> yeah oh man that's so sad <laughs> it is sad man no, i i really do miss you man it's it's legitimately good to see you and i'm, I'm stoked that you know a, that all this shit is ending, but I'm, I'm also just stoked for you to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get some more burgers and go to some more uh, comedy shows. Well, uh, fuck, man. Let me... Uh, I, okay, so now I'm going to mess this up, but I'm pretty sure while we've been chatting that people have been submitting some questions for us. Um, okay, yeah, here's a, here's a good one. And this is, uh, this is from Dojin. I hope I'm saying that right. From Sweden. Shout Dogen. out to Sweden. Uh, he says he loves your old vlogs. He loves your skits 
And he wonders if you have, as long as we're talking about comedy, uh, we went to a comedy show the last time I saw you, he's saying, I wonder if you ever did comedy in the past or is that something you would ever look into doing? Which I was actually wondering too, like if you would ever just go into like, you know, make a, make a movie or make a sketch or like something that isn't so music related. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily go into comedy. Um, it kind of happened really, really randomly. I always did dumb stuff um, back in like the Snapchat days, but I only shared it with friends. And all of them were like telling me constantly like, man, like, like you should just put this on your like, like public Snapchat and stuff. Right. I never did because I was just like, oh man, like people are not going to think it's funny and whatever. And then during the pandemic, I didn't really have anything else to do. So like I really started embracing it. And uh, I got to know uh, Rob, uh, like he's this guy from, from, from Belgium who makes uh, YouTube videos. Uh, his name is Average Rob. Shout out to, to him. And we started talking and we did our first sketch uh, together. And it's this like, I always have these like random ideas for sketches, like not even for marketing, just like right. in general. Um, and I always like, like <laughs> I just always wanted to do them. So I decided like, you know what, like, like why not, um, so using it as a uh, marketing for, for, uh, music and we did it and it worked really well. Um, and I love doing it. Um, it looks so fun, man. I mean, that last yeah. one you shot where you're like tied up in the warehouse, like all of that is I just watching that. I was like, that yeah. was fun to do. You can tell. Um, yeah. But like, like, I don't know if I would necessarily get into like comedy, but like, like one thing I actually got gotten like interested in um, is like, like just like acting. Like, it seems like so much fun now. Like I got this like super randomly, but this like, this like really famous actor in Italy, uh, started following me. Okay. I think he's from like a Netflix show in Italy. Um, I haven't really looked it up exactly like what he's in, but like, he like, like he's like, like really, really famous as like, like 8 million followers or something on, Damn. on an Instagram. And uh, he just really likes my, my music. And I started doing these skits and like, he started telling me, he's like, man, like, like you should really like start getting into acting because like, I think you would be good at it. And now I'm just kind of like, you know what? Like, fuck it. If like when I'm in LA, I'm just going to do a couple of uh, auditions. Dude, you should. That would be great. Yeah. That would be really yeah. good. I mean, there's, there's a precedent for that. I mean, we already talked about like, uh, you know, Getter and Dylan Francis, like people we know have done that, that you could totally do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's just like, I think what the fun thing is about it is like, with like music, like the music itself, like everything has become like really serious, you know, you're like, how many streams is this track going to get? And like, is this track going to get played at festivals and like whatever, but like with something like this, there's like literally zero pressure to like achieve anything. Right. So yeah, it's just, and it's, it can be like a, okay, this is, this actually goes back to something I talk about all the time, which is like, DJs need hobbies, like creative people need hobbies that isn't what their creative thing is. Exactly. Like exactly. you need that outlet, like whatever yeah. it is, whether it's acting or, or, you know, art design for you, whatever it is, like the people get so focused on that one thing. And I think when you just do the one thing, it, it's so easy to lose track of why you're doing it to bring that back around again. It's so yeah. easy to, to lose the passion for it and to forget what was fun about it. But for me, at least like anytime I do like I have a couple like random side nerdy things. Like I love, I, I think you and I were even talking, like I love playing Dungeons and Dragons. That's oh, like yeah. a big <laughs> yeah, yeah, passion exactly, for yeah. me. And I set aside time every week to do it. And it's a, it's a whole thing. Shout out if any of my group is in the chat right now, but uh, even that, like, which, you know, it's like half acting, half playing a game, half just like talking shit with your friends, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. making sure that I set time aside to do that, I get so much more stoked when I go back to work on music, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And like, like, I feel like, I feel like it can be pretty much uh, anything because for instance, like, like during quarantine, like I started, like, I started doing two things to like get my mind uh, uh, off things. Like all my friends in Belgium skateboard right. and they're all really good. Um, and 
I used to do with them when I was like, you know, like, like 14 or something. And then like, I completely quit. And I started again, do like, uh, during uh, quarantine and it's great. And it's like, every time I do it, it just, um, I don't know. It just makes you feel happy. Yeah. And the other thing I do is I, I start playing Dark Souls. Like Ooh. I'm a really, really, really big Dark Souls fan. Yeah. Um, Have you talked to Jake about that? Yeah, man. I like, I talk to everyone about Dark Souls. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's such a sick game, man. It's so cool. Yeah. Well, because Jake killed the noise, Jake. Uh, I mean, he's like, a, I feel like he's like a priest at the Dark Souls church. Oh like, man, Jake. Jake is a dark soul fiend, huh? Oh man, he goes crazy. But he like preaches about why it will help you in your life, you know? No, but it's like, it's actually true. Like I've never played a game that teaches you so much. Like Dark Souls actually kind of does, because I think I, like, I think the same thing goes for uh, skateboarding. It's, it's mm. more satisfying with, with skateboarding because you're actually doing it like with your body. Physically, but, yeah. Um, yeah, but it's, it's like, for instance, in like skateboarding, um, you can like, you can try something for like, for like weeks or months and it just doesn't pan out. And you think like, oh, like, like this is impossible. And then like all of a sudden, like a few months later or like weeks or, or days or like whatever, um, depends on how skilled you are. <laughs> like, like all of a sudden it, 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 it works out and you have this, like you have such a great feeling of like accomplishment and you know, like so much stuff can like happen. Like you can hurt yourself and like break stuff. Um, but it like, it like teaches, like, I just think like, like skateboarding teaches you a lot of really important uh, life lessons. And I feel like dark souls does that as well in a weird way because especially when you first start playing it, it's just, it's so difficult. Like I remember when Lee must die showed it to me the first, like he showed it to me uh, when dark souls three just came out like years ago. Right. And he was like, you're going to love this game. Like, like this is right up your alley. And I, I like when you start the game, it's instantly this like really hard boss. Right. And I tried it a couple times in a row and I was like, Lee, like I, like, I hate this. Like, like this skill <laughs> level is, is, like yeah, it's why so, is this so, fun? so difficult. And then I tried it, I think 40 times or something. And I finally beat him. Yeah. And just, just that sense of accomplishment is just, is just so. Dude, like, I mean, it, it's, it's the same as you and Valentino Khan sitting for six hours, beating your head against the wall. And then finally making that push him, him being like, nope, we're staying in it. And then coming out of it with, you know, an incredible song. Yeah. Like it's that same it's that yeah. same feeling. Yeah, I feel like I feel like it just teaches you. And this is gonna sound so cheesy, but like if you just like keep going and keep pushing, like usually it works out. Yeah. Like I've had so many times where I thought like, oh man, like I've I've almost quit music, like I think like 50 times. Yes. Like even though on the outside, like it like it always appears like it's going so well and there's like a lot of followers and like whatever. Um but like I've I've almost quit like so many times, and every time there's like something inside myself that 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 I just tell like you know what like I'm just gonna try like one more thing or like I'm just gonna try and like reach one more goal and then I'm and and then I might stop and then it always leads to other stuff and like it it always works out and it always gets bigger like I think Dude. whatever you want to do like once you like just like once you stop it's over you know. Yeah. But like, if you just keep going and even if it's like baby steps, like it always tends to work out. I don't know how the comedy question ended up with <laughs> me giving out like these speeches, hey, this, but this is what we do, baby. This is what we do. I mean, to, to put a period on the end of that sentence, you just said, man, it's so many people always ask like, how can, how can I do this? You know, what did you, what steps did you take to be successful and to get to what you're doing? That's always the answer, right? Is it's just, you didn't quit. That's literally, that's the only thing I can tell people. The only secret to success I've ever figured out for myself is just don't quit. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think like, I think, I think a really good example is a, is a Subtronics. Like I'm not hundred percent sure. Like I don't talk to him that much, but 
I think he's been doing it for as long as I've been doing it. And he kind of went like under the radar for so many years. And then like the last two years, he just like, he's, he's one of the biggest acts in bass music now. Yeah. You know, and he just, like, if, yeah, he kept at it. That's it. Yeah. He didn't it's quit. like, if, like if at one point he just said like, Oh, I quit. Like that would have been the end of it. But like, yep. it's, it's like super impressive. Like, yeah. I, and I love that's that. Those are the most inspirational stories to me too, man. I, I love that. But look, let's, uh, there's like way too many questions. I'm going to do a couple more real quick ones and then we'll, we'll get you out of here. I have to, um, I'm going to try and keep it short because I, I always just ramble along. So I'll, I'll just, no, it's dude, I do the exact same thing. It's a problem. So we'll do, we'll do a couple just very rapid fire ones. This one just made me laugh. Uh, this is from I, Lassa. I hope I'm saying that right. Lassa is 16 years old from Germany. And uh, Lassa, hey. Lassa says, I just love this question. How was your childhood and what instrument were you playing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually had a great childhood, like amazing childhood. Um, and I played the electric guitar and I can still play a little bit, but not nearly as good as when I was 11 years old. Oh, yeah. I think I knew that. That's right. Because you're playing it on some of those rock tracks you, you drop every once in a while, right? Oh yeah, 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 I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you forgot, you can play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, okay, couple more quick ones. Oh, okay, this is um, uh, Colin from Los Angeles asks, uh, Colin is the best and most attractive manager and why? <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, are we sure that he's he is the most attractive? I'm not sure. I don't really know. I think I think if I was a manager, I'd be more attractive. You would definitely, I think, yeah. I think I think if you were a manager, you'd definitely be more attractive, Willie. Oh, thank you, man. Do you do you want me to manage you? I could do that. Yeah, yeah, probably. All right, cool. It's kind of weird. It's it's kind of weird because my manager at the moment is called Colin as well, but he's not attractive at all. <laughs> yeah, it's what a weird coincidence. I mean, it's a weird question to get in the first place. And then for that to be true, that's a really weird coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He's yeah, I've I've I've, I've talked to several female friends and they've all explicitly told me like, "Man, Colin's cool, but he is, he's not, he's not a good looking guy. Just, just kind of average. Yeah. yeah I, I'd say probably below average. <laughs> it's not like, it's not because he's taller than me that he's, that he's better looking. You know, like I might only be five, nine, hmm. but what I lack in height, I. <laughs> just pure attractiveness, you know, just, just pure just, just pure male musk, you know? Yeah. Oh, I, I'm very familiar <laughs> with that musk, my friend. <laughs> okay. Anyways. All right. All right. Uh, I think we covered just about all we could on that question. Yeah, man. Uh, I'll, I'll let you get out of here. A bunch of these are just like funny things. A lot of these are just people commenting on like all these videos and all this content you've made that we are just talking <laughs> about, man. And I just love what you're doing, man. It's it's so good to talk to you, and I'm really, really hoping to see you soon, man. Thank you for doing this and uh, bearing yeah, with me course. while we figure all this shit out. I love you, out. Willie. And 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 if if anyone still has any really pressing questions, just hit me up on Instagram, and you can talk to your buddy Mike. All right, buddy. I'm gonna let you go. I love you. Talk to you soon. Love you, Willie. Bye, Thanks, buddy. Thanks, everyone. Bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Right, that's the show shout out to Eptic. great to have you back on man i miss you i love you i hope you're doing good and i'll see you soon for everybody out there listening i hope you enjoyed that as much as i did don't forget Eptic's new song hit with marshmallow and juicy J is out right now on marshmallow's new album he's got a string of bangers out on monster cat right now and there's a lot more music coming so hit the link in the description, go follow Eptic, go see him when he's back on tour in the States, which is 
very soon. And go keep up to date with everything that he is doing. Keep up to date with me as well, if you so choose, at Willie Joy or at Back to Back Pod on all social media, twitch.tv slash Willie Joy. I'm there every single Wednesday recording this show, the one you just listened to. You can come sit in. You can come ask us questions. You can come participate uh, in this show, which is really, really exciting and fun, and we're going to grow that a lot more in the weeks to come. Also, in the description, in the show notes for this episode, you're going to find a link to the back-to-back Discord. You can come in there, get more involved, say hi to me. There's a great group of people. We want you to come post your music. We want you to come talk to us, talk about what's going on in your life, make our community a little more vibrant. And I, of course, am in there all the time because I am a huge nerd who is glued to a screen at most times of the day. So look, that's it for this week. If you're listening to this on release day on Tuesday, and if you're around tomorrow, uh, come check me out on Twitch. I'll be there 5 p.m. Pacific, and I will be talking to my old friend, Flostradamus. I can't wait. I'd love to see you there. Come chat with us. Ask us some questions. It's going to be fun. All right, guys, look, I hope you're doing well out there. I hope everyone out there is, is feeling all right. I hope life is good and that you're happy and healthy and the people around you are doing good. I hope you're able to, you know, go do something fun this week. Go get away from whatever's annoying you at the time. There's always something, right? So find a little time to, to give whatever that is the middle finger to not think about it for a while. Sometimes that's all it really takes is just a little time away. And then when you come back, it doesn't seem so bad. But uh, look, I love you all out there. Take care of yourselves. Take care of the people around you. That's it. That's it for this week. I will talk to you next Tuesday for Back to Back. This is Willie Joy. Peace.